Big Questions with the Dead Milkman. Hello. Hi. This week's big question has to do with intros to songs. And my question to you guys is, what's your favorite intro to a song that you don't really care for the rest of the song? <clears throat> and what's an intro that you don't like to a song that you do like? So <clears throat> my answer to the first part, intro to a song that I like, I mean, I like the intro to a song I don't like, is uh, Back in the Saddle by Aerosmith. <clears throat> you know, I, I can hear it in your head, Rodney. Yeah, everybody knows it. If you don't yeah. know it, why are you in rock and roll? Be and gone. You have this amazing <laughs> intro. It's like building up. There's like so many things that go through my head in this build up. And then you hear, <laughs> and it's like, oh. And then I just rewind it usually and hear it a bunch of times. I just love it. And I just can't stand the rest of the song. Um, <clears throat> I'm not really a big Aerosmith fan to begin with, but um, I don't know. There's just something, it's like kind of creepy. It's like dissonant a little bit about that. Um, Aerosmith aren't even big Aerosmith fans. <laughs> <laughs> um, <clears throat> so, and then for the, I actually had some difficulty finding a song where I didn't like the intro, uh, but liked the rest of it. Um, but I think a great example is the song uh, Mama Gina by Shellac. Came out on the album about 1000 Hertz. Yeah. Starts off with this uh, like drum beat, very slow. <clears throat> and then this guitar part that's just like, and it's like kind of sparse. And this goes on for like three minutes or so. And then uh, Steve Albini starts singing some lines and like there's just bass part and then out of the effing blue it's like this guitar just tears through and it, if you have headphones on it could cause serious damage but it almost sounds like a power tool or something and it sounds like it like over modulates a microphone and like and then this like crazy kind of like fast instrumental part comes in and that actually only ends up being like a minute or so so i don't know maybe is that considered an intro like a four minute intro I just saw a video on how Albini would get that early guitar sound that always like metallic, you know, could use the metallic pick that would cause like a double sound. But he also had a harmonizer that was set way off. I was like, ooh, oh, yeah. Cool. <clears throat> yeah, it's just the, the the contrast to this like, like repetitive, like bass line where it just sounds like it's just like. Blah, 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 blah. And then he's saying these like lyrics about like a ballet dancer or something. Uh, and then it just like tears, tears into it. So um, I'm curious to hear what you guys are going to say. Well, I cheated <laughs> because this was a tough one, because if I like a song and usually it's usually because I like the whole song. Um, so what I did was, I hope you will forgive me. Um, I thought of songs that have really long intros um, and I found two that I liked and two that I can't stand. Um, but I don't, you know, I like the whole of these first two um i like baba o'reilly by the who with that synth sequenced part in the beginning and no it's not called teenage wasteland okay um and uh the other uh song with a super long intro that's really great is papa was a rolling stone by the temptations um that's got like a seven minute intro and then it goes on for like four mm -hmm. minutes the rest of the song um, it was actually, I was surprised to read that it was originally recorded, this is in 1972, by a Motown act called The Undisputed Truth, and then The Temptations actually covered it the same year, and then they won the Grammy um, for their performance of the song. I guess the songwriters in uh, The Undisputed Truth made some money, but it, it was The Temptations that made the song famous. Um, for the two songs that have super long intros that I can't stand, here are two of them. Um, one is the song Bat Out of Hell by Meatloaf from the album Bat Out of Hell. <laughs> um, I, I, I didn't realize, I mean, I, I never liked this album. I never liked the, the you know, this, this album was huge in high school. 
I found out according in, in, in Wikipedia, and Wikipedia is always right. This album was developed from a musical called Neverland, which was a futuristic rock version of the Peter Pan story. Mm -hmm. And all the songs are about Peter Pan. So I didn't know Wait. that. <laughs> yeah. So um, anyway, that's a terrible <laughs> song and with a terribly long intro, bombastic. It's just horrible. And the other example of a song with a long intro that I don't like, um, it's actually, well, I guess it's it's always played together. It's Prelude slash Angry Young Man by Billy Joel. Um, it's got that piano thing going um, and like prog rocky stuff. You know, you would think I would like it, but I don't like it. Um, and it was actually never released as a single, but fans love it. And he always plays it live. And according to Wikipedia, he has to play it live at, at the beginning of the set. So he has the skill and dexterity and energy to play that opening part of the song. Because by the end of the set, he's he's tired out. Anyway, so that's what I did. I hope you'll forgive me for my good and bad long intro songs. I was in Hawaii once. Well, we were all in Hawaii. Uh, and uh, um, we, there was a, a young lady and I were going out to a restaurant and they were treating us. There's only place in Hawaii didn't treat us well. Uh, and uh, um, she went over. She taught me a trick I've used hundreds of times since. She went over to the jukebox. Paradise by the dashboard light was on. And she put in about $15 worth of quarters and just kept playing it over and over again. <laughs> and the place empty. We, I did it to, in a bar once in Milwaukee, too. Because, uh, uh, yeah, they... they the Yankees were there and they didn't want to talk to me. So I was like, okay, hope you guys like meatloaf. Hope you, you're having meatloaf for lunch now. It's like a third or fourth time we've mentioned meatloaf on the show. You know, um, That's also the song that meatloaf asked. I think it's Phil Rizzuto who does the uh, uh, the voice. You know, Holy cows. And again, why is Peter Pan? Why is there a song about Peter Pan getting laid? I don't know. But uh, he asked Phil Rizzuto, he, he asked him to be on the album. Phil Rizzuto like, do the kids have to get high to listen to it? And Meatloaf's like, no, it's better if they don't get high. And then that became a running joke with the band. So we'd say like when Brian came in to produce it, Brian asked, do the kids have to get high to listen to it? And we're like, Brian, they got to be stoned out of their gourds to make it even two minutes into this album. All right. So um, I originally was going to go, I thought, go with the one that most people go with. And that's Hell's Bells by ACDC, which starts out as almost like this Black Sabbath tune and then becomes an ACDC song. And then I was talking to Vienna about it. And Vienna's like, no, no, the, the, the worst song with the best intro is Ice Ice Baby by Vanilla Ice. <laughs> the intro starts and you're like, fuck yeah, Queen and Bowie under. Oh, 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 it's, it's the worst letdown. It's like um, the best example I can give is like it's it's like Christmas Day comes and the biggest present has your name on it. And like, oh, Mumsy, the biggest present is for me. And then you open it up as a pair of socks. But at least with socks, you can wear them. And I like socks. I have a lot of socks that it it, it socks are more useful than ice ice baby. Um. The the only other the the other example I could give is it'd be like if you won free tickets to go to an African American History Museum and you went you're all excited and you found out your tour guide is Marjorie Taylor Greene, that's 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 what happens when you hear the intro. Like, and I know Vanilla Ice always says like, well, theirs is different. There's this dum diddy dum diddy dum dum, and ours is dum dum da 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 dum dum. Like, yeah, not not enough to make it through the lawsuit. The only good thing ever came out of the song Ice Ice Baby. Uh, was Jim Carrey's bit as Vanilla Ice on In Living Color. If you folks have never seen it, we'll put a link in the comments. But yes, I'm a big white baby. <laughs> it is really, really good. Um, okay, so now a terrible intro to a great song. Again, this rarely happens. Um, and the one I have example isn't a terrible intro. It's just it was a momentum killer. Uh, what happened was the song, uh, it had to go all the way back to 1989, and the song is from The Gruesome Twosome, and it is Hallucination Generation off of the Candy from Strangers album. Now, a lot of you are like, I've never heard of this. Trust me, you know this song. Believe me, somewhere in your head, you have heard this song, and if you begin to hear it, you go, oh, I know this song. I don't care if you've got a tattoo of James Taylor on one ass cheek and Arcade Fire on the other. You know this song. This is the one that, you that for those of you who are beginning to put it together, you go, hey, isn't this the one that begins with somebody give the Lord a hand clap? Is that indeed that song? Um, and if you watch the video, and I didn't even know the video existed until like two weeks ago when we decided to do this. Um, I was like, wow, there's a video for this. And the video begins with somebody give the Lord a hand clap. That's fine. 
That's the way the song should kind of really begin. But originally, there was a long ass sample in the beginning. And the, the sample was great. I mean, it was like, you're cleaning your 14 year old son's room when suddenly you find half of a funny looking cigarette. And then the rest was like for the boys club and the boy scouts. Great sample, but 25 seconds long. And if you're DJing, 25 seconds is a lifetime. And I think I could never find what exactly happened. And I'm pretty good with the research on these things. Um, I, I think maybe the boys clubs or whoever made the original PSA sued them and they had to take it off. But it, I think it got the song played more. Um, if you're listening to it at home, you can listen to the whole intro. It's awesome. But a lot of DJs would kind of cut that intro. And uh, um, it's it. it, it Everybody should DJ. It teaches you a lot of valuable lessons about moving stuff along. I think all the Ramones were all DJs. Um, uh oh, Dean's going to go. He's going to go get in. He's bringing in the cat who has heard this song. So yeah, that is uh, um, that is the song is "Hallucination Generation" by Gruesome Twosome, and we'll have a link to the video. If the minute you hear it, you'll go, "Oh yeah, I used to hear this like all that summer in '89." It is. I play it for people who are Wilco fans. They're like, oh, wait a minute, I know this song. And it's the only song they know. All right, so that's that's my two. My song that has the intro that's good. Um, it's like twenty three seconds of glorious grooving drums, organ, guitar, bass, followed by a bland little pop song uh, called "Signs" about a guy who despises signs, and it's by the Five Man Electrical Band. But then it also became, unfortunately for me, because for some reason that that song always grates on me i don't know and and you know the word you probably have heard it so i don't have to explain it but the it became a hit by test this band called tesla in the early 90s and i had to hear it on on the radio <laughs> on tour <laughs> with the milkman i do remember yeah, they um, did a, what an acoustic version that became yes popular? they i guess they were the five man acoustical band or something <laughs> Tesla, or that was the name of the, the thing that they did it for. But uh, the other one, I'll the, the song that I like, but I'm a little, I'm not that crazy about the intro, is um, Wordy Rapping Hood by Tom Tom Club. And the intro is, it sounds like a typewriter, or maybe it could be a, a machine gun sound effect or something, but I think it's probably a typewriter. And it's not, there's no discernible rhythm to it. And all of a sudden this uh, bass synthesizer comes in and plays a few notes and then drops out <laughs> again. And you hear the typewriter. And then you hear the the drum, the drum beat or the, the drum machine. And then the song starts, but, and the song is great, but I just, I don't know that, that intro, I get, I'm, I guess it's the typewriter denotes words and it's all about words. <laughs> Wordy rabbit. And what are words worth? I wish all sweet Jane lived up to the intro. Mm -hmm. was pretty pretty experimental oh, yeah. that's sweet good, jane they're like bling, bling, bling. oh this is kind of weird did it did it oh boy yeah. <laughs> yeah i'd like to also mention the song layla which i despise the song and then i love the piano part at the end you know oh, yeah. Yeah. i know what you're talking that's, about the, yeah. the, the outro is great in that one and yeah he really poured his hatred of minorities in that <laughs> he really well, he had nothing to do with that. that I know, <laughs> I know. The drummer Jim Gordon. Yeah, I know. The good part is nothing. He, I know. Well, Jim Gordon is a character too, but that's true. Yeah, <laughs> but I think he also kind of like stole the melody from someone else. <laughs> I just think it's great. I don't give a shit about the lore. <laughs> I just, I, I find it annoying when DJs, radio DJs, will only play like the rocking part of Layla. And I actually found a book today at the music school. I was looking, it was like great guitar songs or it was great, great rock songs. And I'm looking and I found like Layla and I didn't have the piano part. I'm like, uh, so. <clears throat> they should take out the, uh, the piano part and put in the PSA from Hallucination Generation and just see how that works out. Or put it over the piano part, which I'm going to do right after this meeting. <laughs> it does go on a little long. So maybe... I mean, it's more than 25 seconds, but... Oh, yeah, you can loop it. Or, or you know what? Half speed. You know how I am in, in the studio. It's always like, play it backwards or half speed? Um, recommendations? Um, I would recommend drinking uh, seltzer water. 
<laughs> I know I've recommended drinking regular water. Really branching out. <laughs> yeah, I'm feeling a little crazy here. Branch water. <laughs> yeah, what is it about the bubbles? <laughs> carbonated and shit. Yeah, if, especially if like, you know, I remember years ago trying to not drink so much cola and soda. And I think that kind of helps if you're like trying to get off soda. Drink Sweet soda, milk, soda. Which is actually soda. It's like club soda, I guess. Are they the same thing? Next time on Big Questions, club soda, tonic water, seltzer water. Tonic water has quinine in it. Sparkling water. Water mit gas. <laughs> Pond water. <laughs> Pond water. <laughs> Pond water. Like, like, like Forrest Gump. That'd be great. <laughs> Stagnant water. Pond water. <laughs> gummy water. Um... Uh, I would like to recommend one of the most joyful 30 minutes of music that I have seen in a very long time. It's a real mood lifter, at least, at least it did when I watched it. Um, and you need to make sure to watch it to the very end to see a great version of the song, Let's Dance. And Rodney, check out Rich, Rich Hilton. Um, it's the Nile Rodgers and Sheik Tiny Disc Concert. It's absolutely amazing. Um, they sound great. They're having fun. And... Uh, uh, yeah, it's awesome. Check it out. It's a it's a real uh, joyful thirty minutes of music. My goal has always been to show up at NPR and set fire to that tiny desk. Um, <laughs> so I'm I'm going to recommend extending your Halloween uh, in two ways. The first is you want to see the film uh, just came out called When Evil Lurks. Uh, many of you right now are saying, wait, isn't that from the same Argentinian writer-director uh, who wrote Terrified? Yes, yes, it is. And yes, this is the movie that everybody talks about that scene and trust me that scene lives up to the hype uh i i wish i could have filmed vienna when she was watching this uh, now for next year make plans and start doing it now to attend no hope after dark okay no hope after dark is this they put you on a train at night they take you out to a field in rural pennsylvania you get off the train and well first of all you go through a little haunted house to get on the train then you get off the train and you see fire pits, fire performers, you know, fire breathers, people, who want death metal bands, and they've got another haunted house. This is something you should really want to do, people. This is something that everybody should want to do. Um, so if it sounds good to you, please, please uh, make your reservations or as soon as you can uh, so you don't miss this next Halloween. If it doesn't sound good to you, please go die as soon as possible. Um, we had, there were some people there who, uh, um, uh, basically what happened was they, they, they got off the train and they saw like fire pits and fire performers and, and a death metal band and they got back on the train and they, and you had to be 12 or over to do this. And, and which means teenagers looked at a death metal band went, you know, this isn't for me. I, I was hoping more for James Taylor or Arcade Fire. Got him tattooed on my ass. So, um, yeah, you know, it's never okay to bully kids, but but in this case, yeah, it might might be all right. Uh, I don't know what we've done to our to our teenagers, but we need to, to get them more interested in just being being evil. Um, and, and I know that Mr. Most People will be in the comment section going, well, I'd really like to go to a field in Halloween and hear something mellower. So, yeah, put yourself on the please die list, buddy. Um, so, yeah, that's and also, by the way, um, uh, you that's you don't go to it if you if like you think this may not be for me, uh, but. Also, don't go to it. If you're one of those people when they say, okay, when Mick, you know, you just assume that every form of transportation revolves around your personal schedule. So they say, when Mickey's big hand is on the 12 and his little hand is on the nine, the choo-choo will go bye-bye. And if you are not on the choo-choo, you will be left alone in rural Pennsylvania. All four of us are from rural Pennsylvania. And we can tell you there is no place scarier than rural Pennsylvania. I would pay double what I paid for this experience just to watch people get left in rural Pennsylvania. If you're left in rural Pennsylvania, you will get killed. But the experience itself is really, really good. Um, it's just good to go out and see. The first uh, death metal band was, was, was good. The second one was really, really good. But yeah, I would recommend No Hope After Dark. If you like flames, scary stuff, loud music, all, all that stuff, I would recommend this for you. So get ready for next year. I would like to recommend an album that came out at the very beginning of this month. 
by the punk band uh, Death Pact. It's their self-titled album, Death Pact. It's Death Pact by Death Pact. And you can get it on Bandcamp. It's 12 songs. It's noisy punk from Fort Worth, Texas, and it's fast-paced. Do they have a song called Death Pack? I was going to say, I was thinking the same thing. Death Pack by Death Pack off the album Death Pack. Unfortunately, they do not. We should write one for them. They have 12 <laughs> songs, but they don't have Is it Death Pack? P-A-C-T? Yes. Okay. I just said Death Pack. Either one I like. Death Pack. If you're called, if you're, if you're, if there are probably a bunch of bands called Death Pact. So if you're one of them and you don't want to get in trouble with the other ones, call yourself Death Pact. Yep. Or if they call the album Death Pact, but they were called Death Pact. Well, yeah. folks, we've run out of interesting. <laughs>